Hey everybody, welcome on our channel. In this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto healed the broken god Azula. Part 1. Huge shout out to Alchemists19 for this story. If you are new on the channel, don't forget to subscribe our channel and like the video too. So without wasting any more time. Let's start the story. It had been a year since the defeat of Fire Lord, Oz I and his forces, and the four nations were at peace. We find ourselves looking into a prison cell with armed guards next to the bars. They are there to monitor and control the fallen Fire Nation princess, Asla. She was a very attractive young woman with long silk-like hair, amber eyes, and a heart-shaped face. Unfortunately, her time in the cell had made her sickly, and she spent most of her time curled up trying to find peace. The voices wouldn't leave her alone. Her father was always putting her down for losing to her brother, while her mother was always saying she was so disappointed in her. You should have crushed the Ma's eyes voice shouted in her mind, and Asla flinched. Leave me alone. She said to the voice, you're not real. Az I voice laughed, making Azula curl up more, my dear Azula, I am very real. It said with superiority in its voice, I am here to lead you to victory. You gave me nothing but pain. She shouted out loud, startling the guards. She curled up as far away as she could as tears started to fall. Please, someone, anyone, make the voice stop. She thought as she lay there. In the spirit world. The spirits watched as the former princes fought her demons. She had so much promise but it had been wasted. A woman with long, black hair that reached down to her back watched as well. She wore a formal kimono and walked with an air of authority. She was Kami, the creator of this entire world and many others. She watched as Azula cried, Azula had such a promising future when she was young, but her father had ruined it for her. If she grew up with a little more love and a lot less hate, she would have changed the world for the better, but alas, that was not to be. She seemed so sad. Kami said to herself as she watched. She switched to another world and smiled. And it was a tall blonde who was about 16 years old. He had sun-kissed blonde hair, striking blue eyes, and whisker marks adorning each cheek. He was Naruto Uzumaki holder of one of her daughters, Kyuubi no Yoko. He had grown up without family or love, but had turned into such a fine and caring young man. He always smiled and seemed to bring out the best in everyone. He was currently in his home village of Konoha waiting orders. They had managed to stop Madara and Sasuke Uchiha in their bid to control the world, but the war was far from over. He had been ordered by all the Kages to stay in his village and not to leave. So, he sat there eating ramen with nothing to do. Kami watched as he talked with the ramen stand owner a huge smile on his face. He is truly one of a kind, she said, and the other spirits around her nodded. Wish our world had one like him, said a tall woman, wearing green and yellow armor. She was Avatar Kayashi. Yes, it would have been nice, a man, wearing a long red battle dress, agreed. He would have been an asset in the war. Kami nodded, you might be right, Roku. Kami said with a smile, he can truly bring out the best in anyone. He's not bad on the eyes either. Kayashi said. Roku looked at her annoyed. She smiled, what? I can't find someone attractive. No, that not the problem. Roku said, as he looked at her. He is kind of young for you. Ayashi blushed a bit, hey, I was just saying, she said, with a hint of annoyance in her voice. A guy like him could make any girl happy, no matter what age. Kami nodded, that is very true, she replied, as an idea formed in her mind. Maybe he is just what she needs. Roku looked at Kami and gave her a puzzled look, what do you mean? He asked just smiled. You'll have to see, she said, with a huge smile on her face. She looked back at Naruto, then changed her view to Azula. Yes this might just work. With Azula. Azula lay on the ground in silence. The voices had finally stopped. She lay there curled up, not wanting to move for fear that her father's voice would return. She couldn't take it anymore, she wanted to voices to leave. Soon she heard the sound of the door opening, and a guard walked in with a tray of food. Here's your dinner, he said, and dropped the tray on the ground. She waited for him to turn away before turning towards the tray. She quietly curled over, grabbed the food off the tray, and returned to her spot on the ground. She quickly ate all of the food and returned to her curled up state. Oh, poor Azula, Oz I voice said, making her flinch. Locked away, no bending, all alone. Such a disappointment. I should have banished you instead of Zuko. Azula tried not to listen, but Oz I's voice wouldn't leave her be. Destroy your brother, show him who truly should be Fire Lord. Leave me alone. She said, trying to ignore the ranting voice, but it wouldn't have it. You are nothing but a piece of filth for failing. Oz I voice shouted at her, you're not my daughter. You're nothing but an urchin. Azula started to sing to drown out the voice, it was the song she had heard her uncle sing sing to Zuko when they were younger. Leaf from the vine, started so slow, like fragile tiny shells drifting in the cover, little soldier boy come marching home, brave little soldier boy come marching home, she sang, as Oz I voice faded. 
She sighed in relief for the silence. It seems this one has lost all will, said a voice in the shadows, making Asla jump. Well, you would too if your life crumbled around you, said a feminine voice. Asla lifted her head and looked around for the voices. This wasn't like the usual voices who spoke in her head, these ones seemed to be coming from all around. Oh, how cute, she's looking for us, the male voice said with amusement. Stop antagonizing the girl. The female voice said with authority. Yes ma'am. The male voice said, as Asla saw Pa come out of the shadows for a moment. Asla looked around, what do you want? She asked, letting her anger come through. Well, someone got their fire back, the male voice said, with a hint of mocking. Ran, hush, the female voice said, with a hint of annoyance. We are here to help the poor girl, not to antagonize her. She watched, as a small canine-like animal stepped out of the shadows. It was about four feet long from snout to tail, orange all over, except for the black tips of its ears and a white tail. The animal gave Azula a smile that showed her all of her teeth. Azula would have been afraid of this, but it seemed that the smile didn't hold any hatred in it. Azula scooted away from the animal, what are you, who are you? She said as she looked at the animal. The animal smiled one again, I'm sorry, my name is Hina, and I am a fox sent by Kami to help you. Fox. Kami. Azula asked completely confused. You're just here to torture me aren't you? Hina walked towards Azula slowly. We are not here to torture you, you poor thing, the animal said as she laid down next to Azula. We are here to help. Yeah listen to Kasan, Ren said, and stepped out of the shadows, so, relax. He was smaller than Hina, but he had a mischievous look about him. He walked over to Azula and laid beside her as well. Why are you here? She asked not completely convinced they were real, but they were a nice change from her father's voice. Hina looked up at her, we are here on a request of our master, she said. We have been ordered to lead you to a place where you can truly be happy. Azula looked at her with shock, which turned to sadness. I can never be truly happy, she said finally. Hina looked up at the broken girl. That's not true, she said with conviction, which startled Azula. Our master believes that the place we are taking you will bring you happiness, and she is never wrong. Azula looked at Hina. Who is this master you speak of? She asked, not believing a word. Kami, of course, said Ren, as if it was the most obvious thing in the world. Kami? Who is Kami? Azula asked, the confusion evident in her voice. Hina smiled. You would know her as the Great Spirit, Hina said, as Azula looked at her in shock. Why would the Great Spirit want to help me? She asked Hina. Kami always wants to help those who have lost their way, she said to Azula. You have lost your way more than anyone, so she decided she needs to send you to a place where you can be happy. Azula was silent. Was the Great Spirit going to help her of all people? Was it true, or was it another one of her delusions? This is just a trick sent by your brother to torment you, Oz I voice shouted at her, making her flinch as her body tensed. Hina saw this and leaned against Azula, letting her body warmth calm the girl down. It's all right, Hina said, as Azula slowly became more relaxed. Hina looked at Azula and knew, if she was in here any longer she was too far gone. Ren, it's time to move, she said, startling the young fox. Now? He asked in shock. Are you sure? Hina nodded, if she stays here any longer, she won't last, she replied. So go and take care of the guards. Ren smiled a mischievous smile. On it, he said, and disappeared into the shadows. Hina looked at Azula. Azula dear, it's time to go, she said. Azula looked at her. We're leaving. She said, not too sure whether to believe Hina or not. Yes dear, we are she said and walked towards the prison door. With a swift flick of her tail the sound of the lock opening rang out. She pushed the bars open and smiled, come on. Azula stared at the open door with awe, she couldn't believe it. She could leave. She got up off the floor and took a step, but stopped. What if it was a trick? What if it was her mind playing tricks on her again? She stood frozen, not knowing what to do, until she felt something wrap around her hand. Um kit, Hina said, it's time to go. Azula only nodded and allowed the fox to lead her out of the room. If this was a trick of the mind, she'd rather follow the fox than listen to her father. They soon left her cell and headed out of the building. As they walked, Azula noticed the sight of knocked out guards along their path. They proceeded slowly and finally arrived at the entrance to the prison. Just a few more steps, Hina said, and smiled. Azula froze for a moment. She was almost free. Could this be really happening? Hina looked at her and sighed, pulling her along. They soon stepped outside, and Azula shivered as she felt the night air against her body. She couldn't believe she was out. She was free. She looked around and saw nothing but rocks. Hum kit, let's get going, Hina said, and pulled Azula along a little faster this time. Soon they reached the forest area and headed inside the tree line. Hina kept walking with Azula in tow when suddenly the sound of a loud horn could be heard. It seems they have noticed your departure, hurry. 
Azla nodded, and they started to run. Unfortunately, Azla had been less than active over the past year, so she couldn't keep running for long. Hina noticed this and frowned. She looked around for a moment before seeing a large tree with open roots. She led the young woman towards the tree and stopped right next to it. At inside, Hina ordered. Azla was more than happy to comply. She crawled into the open roots and lay there tired. We will rest here for a few moments before heading out again. Azla nodded and laid her head down. She couldn't help but feel happy about having the feeling of actual dirt on her skin. She had been in her cell for such a long time that this was the most comfortable thing in the world. The scent of leaves filled the air and the how the grass felt against her skin. Suddenly, the sound of a footstep filled the air. Azla tensed and waited to be found, when suddenly, Ren burst out of the trees. Found you, he said out of breath. I threw them off the trail for a bit, but they will figure it out soon, so we need to move. Okay we will, Hina said, and turned to Azla. Are you ready to move? Azla wanted to say no, but she knew this was probably her only chance to get away. Yes, she answered and Hina nodded. She slowly got up and crawled out of the open roots. She stood up and Hina wrapped her tail around Azla's hand. They ran through the forest as fast as they could not wanting to be caught. There she is. A voice shouted. Azla turned to see a soldier running towards them. She tried to speed up, but her body wouldn't allow it, and she tripped over her own feet. She tried to get up as fast as possible, but the soldier was already upon her. She looked up at him, saw the skull part of his uniform, and felt fear. No. I don't want to go back, she said and crawled away. She tried to send some fire at the soldier, but nothing came. Her bending was all but gone. He watched this and continued to advance on her. She kicked him and knocked him back, allowing her enough time to get up, but he was upon her quickly. He had her arms locked behind her back and was about to tie her hands when a small orange blur attacked him. Azla watched as Ren attacked the soldier, biting his throat, killing him. Move it. He said as the blood dripped from his fangs. Azla nodded and Hina began to lead her once again. Unfortunately, more soldiers were heading towards them. The small group ran through the forest, dodging patrol after patrol. There she is. A voice shouted, making the group move as fast as possible. Hina looked back and saw a trio of soldiers gaining on them. Ren, distract them Hina ordered, as she pulled Azla on. Got it, Kasan, he said, and turned around. Azla turned her head and watched as Ren started to glow. His fur grew darker. His form started to grow till he was the size of Massilian. He bared his teeth and attacked the advancing troops. Azla wasn't able to see the rest of the fight as Hina pulled her deeper. Almost there, Hina said, when another group of soldiers spotted them. Soon, fireballs were whizzing past the pair, making them dodge to the ground. Hina looked at the group following them and frowned. Head straight through the trees till you reach a cliff. I will meet you there. Azla was about to protest when Hina gave her a stern look. Go. She ordered and ran towards the charging enemies. Azla ran towards the trees and didn't look back. Hina watched as she disappeared in the trees. She faced her enemies and smiled. Come face your deaths. She shouted as she started to change. With Azla. She ran and ran wanting to reach the cliff as soon as possible. She turned and saw the light of fire coming towards her. Soon the cliff came into the view and she stopped. She looked around and wondered what she was supposed to do next. She looked hoping to find a boat or a group waiting to take her away, but no one was around. What's going to happen? She asked herself. You will be brought back to your pitiful little cell, Oz Ivoy said, making her shake her head. No. I won't go back, she said, and stepped back closer to the edge. Oz Ivoy laughed. This was just a trick, my dear, he said, with mocking in his voice. You are going to get caught and dragged back to the little cell to sit and live out the rest of your pitiful life. No. I don't want to, she shouted, drawing the attention of her pursuers. She watched as they came closer and closer. She backed away, inching nearer to the edge. Stop right there princess, one of the soldiers said. We need to take you back. No. I don't want to go back. She shouted as she was tittering on the edge. Please princess, we are not going to hurt you the soldier said, but Azula shook her head. He sighed and gave the signal. Suddenly a metal cuff wrapped itself around her wrist. She tried to get away, but another cuff grabbed her other wrist. She was brought hard to the ground. She struggled to get away but was held fast and slowly pulled away from the cliff. No. She pleaded, I don't wait to go back. Her pleas fell on deaf ears as she was slowly dragged further away from the cliff. She closed her eyes and let the silent tears fall to the ground. Suddenly, the sound of death filled the air. Azula opened her eyes. She saw several of the soldiers on the ground, blood puddled around their unmoving forms. She looked up and saw Hina standing over them, her fangs bared at her enemies. Leave the kid alone. She shouted at the soldiers, who backed away from the giant fox. Azula watched in awe as Hina charged forward, decimating the soldiers. 
She takes out many with her claws and tail, but more soldiers come. Soon she is hit by fire from all sides. Hina. Azula shouted as she watched the fox fall due to her burns. Hina looked down at Azula and gave her a smile. You will be free, Kit, she said, and with a flick of her tail, launches Azula in the air. Azula watched as Hina snarled and attacked, sinking her fangs into the nearest enemy. She takes out soldiers left and right, and Azula can only see as a huge blast of fire comes towards the fox. Hina is soon lost from sight and hits the water. Her eyes close as she loses consciousness. SB. Naruto sat by the water, bored out of his mind. He couldn't take any missions and couldn't leave the village. Because of this, he sat by a large lake in one of the training grounds. He had found it when he was younger and would go there to clear his mind. He sighed to himself as he watched the clouds. Why does Shaiki find this fun? He asked aloud. He just likes being lazy. Said a female voice in his mind. Naruto smiled, you're right Caillou, he replied. He was glad to have QP with him. She was a great friend and after they had worked together to push back Madara, they grew to be like siblings. She was always teasing him and wondering when he was going to find a nice girl to settle down with. Of course I am right. She replied. Naruto smiled, of course you are, he said and looked out towards the water. He noticed something floating in the water, and he got up. He walked quickly out towards the floating thing, when he saw it was a girl about his age. He ran and pulled her out of the water and carried her to shore. She was breathing and he sighed in relief. I'm glad she's okay, he said, and looked down at the girl in his arms. She was beautiful, the way her hair fell on her face, and her body wasn't bad either. He wondered who she was. He had never seen her in the village, and wondered how she had ended up in the lake. She slowly opened her eyes and looked up at him. Naruto just smiled at her. Glad to see you're awake, he said. You gave me quite a scare. The girl just looked at him. A look of confusion and fear spread across her face before she blacked out once again. Naruto ran towards Hokage Tower, the girl he found in the lake, in his arms. He rounded the corner and ran straight up the wall to the open window. Meanwhile Tsunade Senju sat at her desk doing her usual round of paperwork. She sighed as she looked at the stack piled on her desk and cried inwardly. Ever since the last battle of the war, Madara and Sasuke had been laying low. Some of their patrols ran into some opposing forces now and again, but there had been no major contact with the enemy. Since then, she and the other Kages had ordered Naruto and his fellow Jinchurki, Killer B, to stay in their respective villages and take no missions. Naruto was livid when he heard this and tried to fight it, but Tsunade had shut him down. She threatened to put him in the hospital if he didn't stay in the village. Naruto agreed, due to the fact he would rather be free to move about than stay in the hospital for any length of time. Why does this always happen? Tsunade thought as she finished another round of paperwork. She was about to start the next stack when Naruto burst through the window with an unconscious girl in his arms. Bachan. He shouted, the worry in his voice. Help her. Tsunade looked at Naruto, then at the girl. This was someone she had seen around the village. She motioned for Naruto to put her down so she could look the girl over. Naruto did as he was told and set her down slowly on the couch. Let me take a look, she said, and looked over the girl. She was sickly looking and seemed to not have eaten in a long while. Tsunade did the medical scan justice and saw that she had passed out from exhaustion. She took a good look at the girl and knew for a fact that she was not from the village. Naruto, where did you find her? Tsunade asked Naruto with a bit of concern in her voice. She was floating in the lake in training ground 47, Naruto said. I was relaxing near the lake when I saw her floating in the water. I pulled her out as fast as I could. She was conscious for a moment before blacking out again. Tsunade frowned. Have you seen this girl before? She asked, wanting to confirm her suspicions. Nope, Naruto said with a shrug, not seeing the point in the question. Tsunade waved her hands and five Anbu appeared in the office. Take this girl to a secure room in the hospital, she said with authority. I want her questioned when she awakes. Naruto watched this and attempted to stop the Anbu, but his efforts were frustrated by Tsunade. He stared at her, what are you doing? He demanded. She could be any enemy spy. Swan replied, making him frown. She isn't. Naruto said. I found her floating in the lake, half dead. I don't think a spy would do that. Spies do crazy things to get their information, Swan said, and watched as the Anbu left the room with the girl. But, he began, but Tsunade cut him off. This is for the good of the village, she said. Naruto just sighed. Fine. He said, with a bit of anger. He didn't know why, but he wanted to protect the girl. She seemed so lost when he found her, and he wanted to hold her and make sure she was okay. As he thought about her, Tsunade was trying to get his attention. Naruto. She shouted, getting him out of his stupor. Yabach-an. He said. 
As I was saying, you will be able to check on her later, on after we question her, she said, making him smile. He gave Tsunade a hug. Thanks botch and, he said, and Tsunade smiled. You're welcome, brat, she said, as the two broke apart. Now get out of here, I have work to do. Naruto nodded and jumped out of the window. Swan smiled, then sighed to herself as she turned to face the stack of paperwork awaiting her attention. With Azula. Azula slowly opened her eyes and found herself surrounded by darkness. Cautiously she stood up and looked around, but saw no one. The last thing she remembered was a blonde boy watching over her. She tried to make out his face from memory, but nothing came to mind. When she had looked at him, she felt safe, but she didn't feel that way now. She walked around and tried to find light, but only the darkness was present. Soon, the sound of footsteps filled the air, making Azula look around in fear. Suddenly, her father came into view. Azula, I finally found you, he sneered, walking towards her. Azula started to back away. You can't be here, she said, fearing. You're not real. Oh, my dear Azula, Oz I responded with a cruel smile. I am here, and now I'm going to do what I have should have done before. Azula watched as he sent a large ball of fire at her. She dodged to the side and started to run away as he sent another fireball in her direction. She continued her frantic escape attempt, not daring to look back. She soon found herself alone in the darkness. Feeling a bit relieved, she sat down. Why is this happening to me? She cried as she pulled into herself. There you are, Azula, said a female voice from behind. Azula turned around and beheld her mother standing over her. Mo mother, she said with shock. My dear Azula, I am so sorry you turned into a monster, her mother, Ursa, said, making her cringe. Azula looked at her mother in confusion, what are you saying? I'm sorry you're a monster, her mother repeated. I should have taken care of you earlier so that this wouldn't have happened. Azula watched as her mother pulled out a long knife. I should have done this long ago. Azula watched as Ursa approached her, knife in hand. Azula scrambled to get away, but she ran straight toward her father. She turned around but found herself trapped between her parents. Oz I, let's deal with this monster, Ursa stated. Oz I smiled in reply. Yes, it's time to face your punishment, Azula. The next thing she saw was a large ball of fire coming towards her. No. Azula shouted as she sat up. She looked around and found herself in a white room that smelled funny. She tried to raise her arms but felt something against her wrist. She looked down and found her wrist tied to one of the bars next to the bed. She tried to pull away but the bonds held firm. Suddenly, the door opened and someone walked in. Azula started to thrash around, trying to get free. She was afraid she had been captured again and was going back to her cell. The person who entered saw the terror in Azula's eyes and called for others. Azula pulled at her restraints as hard as she could. The force of her struggles caused the bonds to dig into her skin, drawing blood. Someone get the sedative, a voice commanded, as the people tried to hold Azula down, but she wouldn't have it. She wasn't going back. Suddenly, she felt something prick her neck and she slowly started to fall back into darkness. One of the doctors watched as Azula went to sleep. Get me the Hokage, he said with a sigh, and one of the nurses nodded. He had seen this before and was afraid that getting any information out of the girl would be much harder than he had anticipated. A few minutes later, Swan walked into the room and saw the doctor bandaging the girl's wrist. What happened? She questioned as the doctor finished dressing her wounds. He motioned for Tsunade to follow him outside the room. She woke up and started to struggle. We had to restrain her and give her a sedative. Okay, so what the problem? She asked. From her reaction, I'm thinking she might be mentally unstable, he deduced, making Tsunade frown. Are you sure? She asked. I have seen that reaction before, he said. I am almost positive, but I would like you to bring in a Yamanaka to make sure. I will have Anoichi here as soon as possible, she replied and headed out of the room. The doctor watched her leave and called one of his nurses to watch the girl. With Naruto. Naruto sighed as he left his apartment, he had decided to visit the girl from the lake and thought it would be a good time to go see her. They had to be done with her questioning by now he thought. He smiled to himself and headed out. He grinded as he looked around the village. Even though it was nothing but a huge creator some time ago but the village came back vigorously. That is the will of fire for you, he said as he headed towards the hospital. Naruto soon arrived at his destination and headed toward the main desk. He was about to ask for the girl's room when he saw a familiar head of pink hair. Hey Sakura, he called out, getting the girl's attention. Sakura turned and saw Naruto heading towards her and sighed heavily. Hey Naruto, she said, trying to hide her annoyance. What are you doing here? I'm he began but was interrupted by one of the nurses giving Sakura some files. He sighed and turned. I'm just going to go. Sakura finished talking to the nurse and looked around for Naruto. Seeing that he was no longer there, she continued on her way. 
Naruto meanwhile was headed towards the prisoner wing of the hospital to check on the girl, after finding the main desk to be no help. He entered the wing and saw Tsunade standing next to Inoichi, Ino's dad. He walked over to the pair with a smile on his face, hi Bachan he grated. Tsunade turned to face Naruto, a look of annoyance on her face. What are you doing here? She questioned curtly. I came to see the girl, he responded. You should be done questioning her now, right? No, we haven't, Swand replied. She woke up for a few moments, but she started to struggle, so we had to sedate her. Is she, okay? Naruto asked with concern. For now, she replied. I'm going to have Inoichi enter her mind and see if he can get anything from her. Naruto nodded. Can I come? He asked. Swan nodded. He followed the pair as they entered a room down the hall and saw the girl lying on the bed, her wrists tied to the bed bars. He noticed that her wrists were bandaged and wanted to inquire about it, but remained silent as he watched Inoichi walk over to the girl's side. Inoichi went through several different hand signs and created an open diamond with his hand. Mind transfer justice. He said and his body slumped. Inside Azula's mind. Inoichi stood in darkness. He started to walk, his blonde hair swinging behind him. He walked until he reached what looked like a bit of shattered glass. He picked it up and saw that it was a piece of the girl's broken memory. It showed when she was a young girl, talking to a woman who seemed to be her mother. He set the glass down and continued on. Soon, he found more and more shattered fragments of memories. What could have caused her mind to shatter this much? He thought to himself. He started to slowly piece together the memories. He saw that she was a princess of a great nation, who seemed to be able to control fire, without the use of hand signs. This nation seemed to be at war, with what looked like, the rest of the world. He saw that she was very ruthless and always decimated her enemies. She would have made a great shinobi, he decided, as the memories continued to fall together. He watched the betrayal she received from her companions, and her fight with a boy with a burn around the left side of his face. He frowned and saw that she had been in a cell ever since. He was about to leave when he saw the girl run past, the fear evident on her face. He turned and saw two people chasing after the girl. It was the woman who looked her mother and the man he assumed to be her father. He was about to chance after them when he suddenly felt himself being expelled from her mind. He opened his eyes as he felt himself enter his body, only to see that the girl was shaking violently. Tsunade was trying to stop her, but the shaking was getting worse. What happened? He asked, getting up in an attempt to help. Dot. She started to have a seizure a moment ago, Tsunade replied. Inoichi watched this and wondered what they could do for the girl. He suddenly saw Naruto rush forward and put his hand on the girl's forehead. Naruto, what are you doing? Swan cried, but it seemed Naruto hadn't heard her. His only focus was on the girl. The pair watched as his eyes slowly closed and wondered what he was up to. With Naruto a few moments earlier. Naruto watched as Inoichi entered the girl's mind. He couldn't help but worry. He couldn't shake the feeling that something bad was going to happen to her and he wanted to stop it. Yubi noticed his apprehension and tried to alleviate his worry. It's fine kid, she said. Inoichi is just taking a look around. I know that, Naruto replied, the worry evident in his voice. I just have a feeling that something bad will happen. QB knew that when Naruto got one of his bad feelings, he was usually right, okay kid, I believe you. She assured him, and Naruto smiled. Thanks Caillou, you're the best. He said, as QB returned the smile. You know why she replied, with confidence. Suddenly the girl began to move about, violently. Naruto watched as Tsunade rushed over to see what was going on. Soon Inoichi was back in his body and started to help Tsunade. Kid, go over there now. QB yelled at Naruto. What can I do? He asked in a panicked voice. Thus go over to her and place your hand on her forehead. I will take care of the rest, QB ordered. Naruto nodded and ran over to the girl. He placed his hand on her forehead as QB started to move Naruto's and her mind into the girl's. Naruto felt a pull on his mind as he slowly closed his eyes. With Azula. Azula ran frantically, trying to get away from her parents, but without success. She just couldn't shake them. Leave me alone, she shouted, as she ran, hoping that her pleas would make her tormentors go away. Her request was answered with a fire blast. She turned and ran to the side, her parents in hot pursuit. She soon came upon a number of pillars all around her and decided to hide behind one. She sat down and tried to catch her breath, but soon the sound of footsteps grew louder. Oh Azula, Ursa sang out as Azula scooted closer to the pillar. Come out Azula. Azula didn't move, not daring to make a sound. Azula, please come out, Oz I called as a pillar crashed to the ground. Azula dashed to another pillar and remained still. Azula, come on out, Ursa begged. Azula remained frozen as she watched a huge wave of fire take out several pillars beside her. 
They're not real, she told herself, but she could still hear the clamor as more and more pillars were smashed to bits. She knew she couldn't stay there any longer, and she took off again. She ran as fast as she could, unwilling to look back not wanting to see what was waiting for her. She wanted to get away from it all, the pain, the loneliness, the sorrow, she wanted it all to end. There she is. Oz I shouted causing Azula to run faster. Please. Someone help me. She thought to herself as she fled. But Naruto. Naruto opened his eyes and looked around. He found himself in darkness with QB standing by his side. We are in the girl's mind, QB said as they looked around. Okay, now what? Naruto asked. We find her and help her, QB replied. Naruto nodded in agreement. Let's go, he exclaimed and started to walk into the darkness, with QB close behind. But Azula. Azula came from out of the pillars and found herself standing in a replica of the courtyard where she fought Zuko. She tried to head to the stairs, but a well appeared to be blocking her way. She turned back to see her father and mother standing there. We found you, Oz I said satisfied, as he brought out a fire-covered hand. It is going to be okay, honey, Ursa stated as she lifted her knife. Azula looked at her parents, her back pressed against the wall. No. Leave me alone, she screamed, searching for an escape. This is for your own good, Ursa said as she started to walk towards Azula. This will only hurt for a moment. And Azula stammered as she watched her mother coming towards her. No. But Naruto. No. A girl's voice echoed, causing Naruto to look around with a start. Where is she? Naruto shouted in frustration. He looked around but still was unsure as to where the sound came from. Help me. The voice echo again. Naruto frowned in complete frustration. To hell with it. He shouted and ran off to the left. QB followed close behind. Please be okay, Naruto thought as he ran. But Azula. Azula managed to dodge another blast of fire. She looked up to find and saw her mother still advancing. She turned and ran back toward the pillars, hoping to find new place to hide. She sprinted and soon felt a familiar surface against her feet. She looked down and saw a metal grate over water. No, she thought, and tried to get off the grate, but she was stuck. Ice began to crawl up her leg, slowly trapping her body. Not again. Not like this. Ursa walked towards Azula as the ice continued to envelop her body. She hovered over Azula, knife at the ready. No more running, she said angrily, making Azula show fear. No please. Azula begged, please someone help me. Ursa looked at her daughter with sorrow in her eyes. I am sorry this has to happen, she said as she raised the knife, but this is the only way. Azula watched as the knife came down and closed her eyes, waiting for the end, but the end never came. She slowly opened her eyes and saw someone new, standing in front of her. He wore a black jacket and pants that had orange stripes going down the sides. His blonde hair danced in the wind. You're not laying a hand on her, he said and pushed her mother back. He turned and smiled at Azula. He had a handsome face and six whisker-like marks in his face. You okay? He asked reassuringly. Don't worry, I will take care of it. Who are you? She asked hesitantly. Let me take care of this first. He said with a smile and turned to face Ursa. I have no idea why you're attacking her, but you're not going to hurt her. He demanded and pushed her back. Who are you? Ursa shouted, her attention suddenly diverted to the boy and attempted to stab Naruto. He easily sidestepped the attack and punched Ursa across the face. He pressed his attack and pushed Ursa back even further. Oz I came forward and attempted to attack when suddenly a large fox with nine tails assaulted him. He found it futile to fight back and found himself trapped. Ursa had backed away from the blonde. Oz I had got away from the fox and stood next to his wife. Damn you. Oz I exclaimed as they retreated. He stopped and looked at Azula for a few moments. I will be back for you. Azula shrunk back from that comment and watched as Oz I faded into darkness. Azula turned and saw Ursa watching her. I'm so sorry she mouthed, and then she too faded into the darkness. The boy walked over to her and started to remove the ice from her body. She was quickly freed and he held her in his arms. He walked over to the fox. It is going to be okay now. He said relieved. She looked at the boy. W-H-U-R. Dot you. She stammered making him laugh a bit. I'm Naruto Uzumaki, he said, and who might you be? Azula, was Azula's reply, and Naruto grinned. Well, I'm glad you are safe, Naruto said, and walked over to the fox. Now it is time to wake up. Azula nodded calmly, and everything faded to black. She opened her eyes and found herself back in the white room on the bed. She looked around and saw Naruto standing next to her. Glad to see you again, he said with a smile, and Azula nodded. She looked at the blonde and felt safe for the first time in a long time. Naruto looked down at Azula and smiled, glad to see her safe and sound. Azula stared at him in wonder and couldn't believe he was standing over her. 
She was about to say something when the Tsunade came over and grabbed Naruto by the collar. What the hell were you thinking? She shouted at him as she started to shake him around like a rag doll. Naruto tried to answer, but the Tsuan wasn't done yet. Do you have any idea how worried I was? Do you? I. Am. Dot sore. Dot sorry ba. Dot chan Naruto stammered, only to receive a punch to the face. This made a Naruto sized indent in the wall. Am brat, Tsunade said as she turned to face Azula. My name is Tsunade Senju, and who might you be? I am Princess Azula, of the Fire Nation, Azula replied, as she looked back at Tsunade. Tsunade looked at Azula, an emotionless expression across her face. Well, Princess, she began, how did you end up in my village? I was running from the guards and was cornered at a cliff. Then I fell and landed in the water. The next thing I remember is waking up in Naruto's arms before passing out again, Azula answered, and Tsunade frowned. Tsunade looked at the girl before her and turned. Inoichi, she said, and the blonde man walked over to her. Yes, Hokage-sama? He asked. Tsunade motioned for him to follow her, and they headed out of the office, leaving Azula alone with a barely conscious Naruto. What is Azula's mental state like? She asked, once they were out in the hallway. Inoichi gave Tsunade a serious look. Her mind is in fragments, he explained. She's completely broken. From what I could gather, she was betrayed and lost a battle, making her mind break down into what it is today. So, there's no way to get any clear information out of her? She asked, and Inoichi nodded. To get anything out of her, we need to heal her mind first, he replied. A hint of worry was laced in his voice. Fixing her mind might be a problem. It seems that some part of her mind is trying to destroy her as we speak. Before I was ejected from her mind I saw her running from what appeared to be two people. From what I could gather those were her parents. They seemed to be out to destroy her. This is bad, Tsunade sighed, as she looked into the room. She noticed Naruto, who was finally able to function again, sitting beside Azula's bed with a smile on his face. She turned and saw that Azula seemed to be calm around Naruto. She smiled as she watched the blonde work his magic. I don't think that will be a problem. Inoichi looked at Tsunade with confusion when she pointed towards the pair. Inoichi smiled. Well, that's unexpected, he thought, and Tsunade nodded. Tsunade re-entered the room, making the two teenagers turn and face her. She looked at them and smiled. Naruto, I want you to head to my office please. I have a mission for you, Tsunade said. Naruto looked at her with confusion. A mission? But I thought I couldn't take any missions he began, but quickly shut up as Tsunade gave him an evil glare. Thus do as you're told, Tsunade said, with a sickening sweetness in her voice. Yes botch and, Naruto agreed quickly and turned to look at Azula. I'll see you later. Will you? Azula asked, with a hint of worry in her voice. I promise I'll be back, he said with a huge smile. It's my ninja way, I always keep my promises. Azula nodded at this, and Naruto stood up and headed out of the room. Tsunade watched him leave and turned to look at Azula. I have a few questions I would like you to answer, she said to Azula who nodded slowly. A little bit later. Naruto stood in Tsunade's office, bored. It had been a while since he had left Azula in the hospital, and he wanted to make sure she was okay. Unfortunately, Tsunade had yet to come back, so he was stuck in her office till she returned. He turned and looked out the window when he felt a familiar pull on his mind. He walked over to the couch and sat down. Let's see what Kaiyu chan needs, he thought to himself, and entered his mindscape. He soon found himself in a wooded area with a lot of wildlife. He smiled to himself as he started to walk and found himself standing in front of a small log cabin. Standing on the deck was a woman with long red hair and red eyes, with two fox ears on top of her head and nine tails flowing from her tailbone. She wore a black and silver kimono that hugged her body. She walked towards Naruto, a smile on her face. Hey Naruto-kun, she said with a grin. Naruto walked over to her and gave her a brotherly hug. Hi Kaiyu-chan, he replied, how are you? Dust dandy, she said with happiness just enjoying the new place. It is so much better than the sower. Hey, it's the least I could do after your help with the last battle against the team, he said. Oh stop, you're making me blush, she said teasingly, hitting him in the arm. Naruto laughed. So, what do you need? He asked her. You be motioned for him to follow and they headed inside the cabin. She sat down on one of the chairs while Naruto sat on one of the couches. It is about Azula, she said getting his full attention. What about her? He asked, a hint of worry in his voice. There's something off about her, QB started, making Naruto looked at her with confusion. What do you mean? He asked, still not understanding. QB looked at the boy. I mean, there's something off about her chakra, she said making Naruto finally begin to comprehend the situation. What's off about it? He questioned. I didn't sense anything wrong with it. 
That's because, outside of sage mode, you can't sense chakra to save your life, QB commented, making Naruto give her a sinister glare. Hey, it's not my fault I can't sense chakra that well, outside of sage mode, he mumbled, making QB laugh. It's okay, she said. As I was saying, it seems that her chakra has lost all of its color. That can't be, Naruto exclaimed in disbelief. Chakra always has color. That is ordinarily true, but hers doesn't, QB replied. It seems to have faded. How can that be? He questioned. I really don't know, she replied apologetically. I think it is due to her mental state, since her mind is in pieces, her chakra lost its color. But that's not possible, he cried jumping from his seat. I see a crazy person and their chakra still has color. We will have to see, QB stated, rising. She seemed distant for a moment. We will have to finish this conversation later. It seems you have company. Naruto nodded. I'll talk to you later Kayu-chan, he called. By Neru-kun, she replied, and Naruto left his mindscape. Naruto opened his eyes and saw Tsunade standing over him. Hi Bachan, he said, and Tsunade smacked him on the side of his head. Idiot, stop calling me that, she shouted, as Naruto rubbed a hand against his head, trying to alleviate the pain. Sorry Bachan, Naruto replied, when he saw a large book flying towards his head. He dodged to the side and looked over at Tsunade. That wasn't very nice. It wasn't meant to be nice, brat, Tsunade grumbled. Naruto nodded and took a seat in front of Tsunade. So, what's the mission? He asked with excitement in his voice. First, you need to tell me what you did back in Azula's room, Tsunade stated making Naruto stare at her with wonder. She saw the confusion on his face and sighed when you put your hand on her forehead when she was shaking. Oh, Naruto replied, finally catching on. I was helping her wake up. How? Tsunade demanded. Ai-chan told me to go over and place my hand on Azula's forehead, he stated, then she pulled my mind and hers into Azula's. So thanks to QB, you were able to enter her mind, Tsunade said. What was her mental state like? Wah? Naruto replied, confused, making Tsunade sigh in annoyance. What did it look like in there, she explained. Oh, Naruto stated finally understanding. It had broken glass all over the place. There was one place that seemed to be whole, but everything else was broken. Tsunade nodded. So, her mind is in shambles, she said to herself. She looked at Naruto and gave him a serious look, Naruto. Yes botch and, he said making her eye twitch, but she remained in her seat. The mission is to take care of and heal the mind of Azula, she commanded, making Naruto stare at her in shock. Tsunade smiled. You will be in charge of her safety, as well as her health. You will be moving into a bigger apartment so you can better take care of Azula. She is to eat healthy, to help her body regain its strength. That means a balanced diet and not just Raymond all day. But Bachan, Naruto began, but was cut off by Tsunade. She needs this, Swan responded forcefully, as well as yourself. No, as I was saying, you are to take her to training with you and help her get some physical exercise. Every Friday you are to take her to Inoichi to help her with her mental state. You are to enter as well, if able, and help. Is this understood? Yes Bachan, Naruto said with a salute, making Tsunade smile, but her eye twitch remained. You can go and pick up Azula at the hospital. After you get her, meet me back here, she commanded. Be back in a flash, he said and jumped out the open window. Tsunade watched as the blonde flew out the window and blew up, use a door for once, Brad. With Azula. Azula sat on her bed. After that Tsunade had questioned her, she had been left alone. The only thing she was told that someone was going to collect her and take care of her. She wondered who it would be and hoped they weren't going to throw her into another cell. Osla, you're going to be sent into the darkest cell they have and spend the rest of your miserable existence, rotting there. Oz's eye voice echoed in her head, making her cringe. You're wrong, she stated, trying to ignore the voice. No, he is not, Uzra voice said, this time making Azla shake. You need to be locked away. Monsters like you don't deserve to be free. Azla sat on her bed, her hands holding her head. I'm not a monster, she cried, only to be answered by the sound of her father's laughter. You are a monster, Oz I voice shouted. Monsters try to destroy all those who oppose them, without mercy. Monster control people, Ursa voice continued. As with Mai and Tai Li, you tried to control them through fear, but in the end, they left you to live a better, life free of fear. Now you are all alone as a monster should be. Azula tried not to listen, but her parents' voices wouldn't leave her. A monster, Oz I and Ursa voices said in unison. Monster, monster, monster. I'm not a monster. Azula shouted, getting the attention of one of the nurses. That is what a monster would say, Oz-Eye's voice growled. Some monsters don't even know they're monsters. I a monster. Dot Azula said slowly, as Oz-Eye voice chuckled. 
Yes, you are a monster, he said, sensing a change in Asla, a monster that needs to be put down. I'm a monster, she repeated, and hung her head. I'm a monster. You are not a monster. A voice shouted, bringing Asla out of her trance. She looked up and saw Naruto as he ran over to her and pulled her into a tight hug. You are not a monster. Asla couldn't believe what was going on. No one had hugged her in such a way before. It felt different, but nice. She slowly raised her arms and wrapped them around the blonde. She felt safe in his arms and let herself melt into his embrace. Naruto slowly broke the hug and gave Asla a large smile. Come on, let's get going, he said and offered Asla his hand. She looked at it, then at him. He saw the slight confusion in her eyes. Just take my hand, you will be safe. He's trying to trick you, Oz I voice said with a hint of fear in his voice. He wants to lock you away. Asla looked at Naruto, straight in his eyes, and tried to see his intentions. All she could see was kindness and safety in them, also a bit of understanding. Oz I voice tried to convince her that going with Naruto was a bad idea, that it would only bring her pain. This is a lie. Oz I's voice shouted at her. You're a monster, a monster. Asla tried not to listen, but a voice she never expected to hear, entered her mind. Go with a boy, the voice of her uncle Iroh said, making eyes widen in shock. Live free of your past. Asla lifted her hand slowly and put it into Naruto's. He smiled at her and helped her to her feet. Come on. He said and led her from the room. In the avatar world. What do you mean she can't be found? A young man shouted with anger. He was tall with short black hair. His most distinguishing feature was a large burn on the left side of his face. This was Fire Lord Zuko, brother of the Fall Princess. It had been several days since Azula's escape from her cell and everyone was on edge. We have checked all over the nation and have yet to find anything, the captain of the guard said. This made Zuko frown. This is very bad, he said. Continue your search. I want her found as soon as possible. Yes my lord, the captain said, saluting. He quickly turned and headed out of the chamber, leaving the young lord to his thoughts. She could start another war, Zuko thought, but he knew that her mind was still broken when he had visited her a few weeks back. Could she have been faking? Zuko sighed and sent out a blast of fire from his hand in frustration. Why did this have to happen, he said to himself. Everything happens for a reason my boy, an elderly voice said. Zuko turned to face a short man with white hair and a wise face. Uncle, he said and hugged the old man. This was Iroh, former general of the Fire Nation army, brother to the former Fire Lord, and caring uncle to Zuko. It is good to see you, Iroh said and broke the hug. Now what is this about Azula escaping? Zuko sighed and explained what had happened. Iroh listened and nodded. This is very troubling, Iroh said with a frown. She needs to be found, not just for everyone else's sakes, but for hers as well. I know uncle, but she could be anywhere, Zuko stated and sat down on the throne. I have all the guards and soldiers looking for her and they haven't found her at all. Why don't you contact Ong about this, Iroh suggested. I already have, Zuko replied and looked out the window. I just hope we can find her in time. We will, Iroh stated. Now, let's have some tea. I just introduced a new flavor at my shop and wanted to get your opinion on it. Zuko just smiled at his uncle and nodded. It was nice to have him around. As they left the office, he couldn't help but feel a sense of trouble looming on the horizon. But the avatar. Ong found himself in the spirit world. He wondered how he had gotten there. He turned and saw the trees all around but no one in sight. How did I get here? He thought as he looked around. He slowly traveled around till he found himself standing in front of large table and several spirits seated around it. Ah Avatar, glad to see you have come, said one of the spirits. He was a large tiger, and sitting next to him was a familiar panda bear. This was High Bai, the spirit of the forest. At the head of the table sat Princess Yu, the moon spirit. It is good to see you Ong, she said with a sad smile, but unfortunately it is at a troubling time. What has happened? He asked with concern in his voice. Princess Azula has disappeared, you said, making Ong look at her in shock. What happened? He asked with concern. She escaped with the help of two spirits I have never seen before, you said, creating a picture of what happened. These two spirits helped the Azula escape and somehow sent her somewhere I cannot see. What do you mean? Ong said, yet not wanting to hear the answer. Azula is no longer in this world, but in another, you said, and Ong looked at her in shock. This is bad, he stated, and many of the spirits present nodded. We conquer, you said. We are willing to send you and a few others to the other world to retrieve Azula, so she can't bring her evil there as she did here. How will you do that, Ong began, but you cut him off. That does not matter at the moment, she stated. What matters are that you gather those you feel will be best for this mission. I understand, he said and bowed. I will gather them as soon as possible and wait for your next call. Good, now go, you said, and Ong felt the world around him disappear. 
He slowly opened his eyes and saw Kateria standing over him. We need to go see Zuko, he said. In the spirit world. Yu and the other spirits at the table sat there talking when they saw two small canine-looking creatures walk towards them. Yu saw that they were the spirits who helped Azula escape. Halt, she ordered. Who are you and why have you come? My name is Hina and this is my son Ren, the female canine explained. We are foxes sent by Kami. Foxes? The Tijer Dilo said with confusion. What is a fox? We are foxes you idiot, Ren said, only to get smacked in the head by Hina. He is still young and has yet to learn manners, Hina said, annoyed. As for why we have come, we are here to tell you to leave Azul alone and not to send the Avatar and his friends after her. She's a monster. You shouted. She needs to be locked away. I have seen what she has done, who she has hurt. She is a menace. Hina gave you a threatening smile. That is where we disagree, my dear moon spirit. Azula is a lost soul who needs to be healed. That is why Kami has sent her to the other world. Who is this Kami you speak of? You asked. She is what you call the great spirit, Hina stated, making all of the spirits gasp. That's not possible, you shouted. The great spirit wouldn't help someone of such evil. Think whatever you want, Muni, Ren said with a hint of mocking. But when Kami helps someone, there is generally a good reason. I don't care what reason this Kami has for helping that girl, but I believe they are wrong, you said, and all the other spirits agreed. Hina looked at them with anger. You are a bunch of close-minded fools, she stated. She is a girl who lost her way, and you condemn her to a life of misery. Such a disgrace. Hina turned and Ren followed leaving the other spirits to their thoughts. Hina stopped for a moment and looked back at the assembly. Mark my words. If you send the Avatar and the others to the other world, they will regret it. Naruto lead Azula throughout the village towards the top of the Hokage Tower in silence. Naruto held Azula's hand not wanting to let her go. He wanted to keep her close or Tswan would kill him. He looked at Azula and saw the worry and fear in her eyes as they walked. He watched as she flinched as she passed a group of people. He wrapped his arms around her waist and held her close, it okay, he whispered to her as they walked. I won't let you go. Azula looked up at him, you're lying, she said, and tried to move away from Naruto. Naruto didn't let go and pulled her into hug, I am not lying, he said as he stroked her hair. I will stay by your side always, and that a promise of a lifetime. Azula listened to the words and she stood frozen. He lying, Oz Ivoy said with a laugh. He going to lock you away and leave you to rot. Please don't lie to me. Azula whimpered. Naruto couldn't help but hug Azula even closer. He hoped that his feeling would get across to her. I won't leave you. I promise didn't I? A promise means nothing. Azula stated and pushed Naruto away from her. I had promises before and they were all broken. Your promise means nothing. Naruto just stared at her and walked towards her. He once again wrapped his arms around her form. I don't care if you think I am lying, I am not going to leave you alone ever. Azula struggled in his grasp wanting nothing more than to run and hide, but his grip was too tight. Oz I voice soon entered her mind once again, this is just a ruse, run and hide like the filth you are. You need to be locked away. Ursa voice stated making Azula shake even more in Naruto grasp, her fear getting the better of her. Naruto couldn't help but feel helpless as Azula struggled in his grasp. Why can't I reach her? He thought. Hu B listened to this and frowned. She knew Naruto would never lie about a promise, let's see what's going on in her mind. She said and pushed her chakra into Azula. Before she entered Azula's mind she pulled Naruto in his. Naruto suddenly found himself in front of QB, he was about to ask why he was there when QB just grabbed his arm and pulled him into Azula's mind. Soon the sight of broken memories filled his vision. Come on, QB said and started to walk through her mind. Naruto followed behind her and looked around. They continued to walk around when QB stopped, standing in front of them were Azula's attacker from before. Oh look at the two little troublemakers. QB said with a frown. Are you two tormenting our poor girl? Leave interlopers. Oz I ordered, Azula does not need your help. Naruto looked at Oz I and Ursa with anger, who are you to judge what she needs? We are her parents, Ursa stated, we know what best for our daughter. So attacking her the last time we were here was for her own good. QB replied with distant in her voice. She needs to be put down. Ursa shouted, but Oz I put his hand up to silence her. We need not explain anything to this filth, Oz I stated, we need only to expel them. Oz I made a fist and shot a large fireball towards QB and Naruto. Naruto narrowed his eyes and charged forward. He created two shadow clones without hand signs, and they quickly threw the original Naruto over the fireball. QB just held up her hand and absorbed the fire without a care. Naruto created a Rasengan and dove towards Ozai and Ursa, eat this. He shouted. Ozai jumped out of the way and watched as Naruto's attack drill into the ground. Before Ozai could recover from Naruto's attack, QB sent an even bigger fireball towards Ozai. 
Ba's eye dodged to the side but could feel the heat from the attack. Ursa ran to her husband and pulled out her knife. Naruto stood next to QP and looked over at the pair. Leave Azul alone, he ordered, she doesn't need you tormenting her. You can never get rid of us, Ursa said and threw her knife at Naruto. The knife was poorly thrown, and Naruto was able to catch it with ease. Yeah right, Naruto said his anger taking control, I will destroy you myself right now. QP put her hand on Naruto's shoulder, calm down, she said. Naruto slowly let the knife fall from his hand, thanks Caillou, he said. You're welcome, QP said, and then looked back at Azula's parents. As for you two, it is Azula's right to deal with you, but I can at least give her a reprieve from you two. She lifted her tails and Ozai and Ursa were surrounded by chains. Soon both Ozai and Ursa were chained to the ground and couldn't move or talk. QB and Naruto soon left Azula's mind leaving the chained pair to their current fate. As they re-entered Naruto's mind QB started to sway, Naruto noticed this and caught her. Are you okay? He asked worried. I'm fine, QB replied catching her breath, it just takes a lot out of me affecting another person mindscape beside ours. But you have unlimited chakra you shouldn't get tired from something like this. Naruto stated. That is correct, but it is still in your body, she said, I can only manipulate a little chakra without your approval, and I used it all up on getting us there. So let me rest. Naruto sighed and helped QB to her bed, okay fine, but next time warn me first, so I can give you a bit more chakra. Fine, fine, QB stated and waved him off, Naruto turned to leave. Wait, she called, just to let you know what I did was a temporary fix, it will give her relief for only a few hours, it's up to you and her to get her past this. Got it, Naruto stated and disappeared. Naruto soon returned to his body, and Azula had stopped struggling and had snuggled into him and seemed at peace. Naruto looked down at her glad that she was calm. He suddenly looked around and saw a crowd had formed around the pair. He blushed and rapped slowly picked up Azula bridal style and headed towards the Hokage Tower once again. Azula felt that she was moving, but it didn't matter, the voices were silent and she felt safe. Naruto had never let her go even when she struggled. She was so scared when the feeling of peace and safety come over her. In her mind she felt the voice stop and silence giving her peace. Her body reacted on her own and she drew closer into the Naruto. She didn't know why she was doing this, but it felt right. She also felt when he picked her up, her arms wrapped around his neck and her head leaned against his chest. The warmth he gave off was like nothing it ever felt. She once heard her uncle say that a fire can is life and death. He felt like the fire of life, the warmth that provided safety and peace. As they traveled they didn't notice a pair of eyes following them. The pair of eyes narrowed as Naruto and Azula disappeared out of sight. Dark blue hair fell and covered the eyes, the anger and jealousy shining through. In the Avatar world. Ong and Katara arrived at the Fire Nation Palace fairly quickly. Ever since Ong had come back from the spirit realm they had traveled no stop to talk to Zuko. Katara looked at her boyfriend in worry as they traveled. He had been surprisingly quiet the entire trip and it unnerved her. He was usually so full of life and always smiling, but whatever happened in the spirit realm had shaken him greatly. She was pulled out of her thought when the sound of her name being called filled her ears. She turned and saw Ong looking at her. Are you okay? He asked concerned. Katara just smiled, I'm fine. She replied and gave him a quick kiss. Just lost in thought. Ong just nodded and held her hand. She grinned once again and they walked towards the palace. They were greeted by the familiar sight, standing there were all their friends. Sokka stood next to Suki a huge smile on his face. Toph just stood there tapping her foot, bored. Zuko stood next to Mai with his usual stoic face. Hello everyone, Katara said with a smile and gave everyone a hug. But great to see you sis, Sokka replied. It has been a while you too. Suki stated with her own grin. Took you long enough twinkle toes, Toph said with a laugh. Zuko walked up to Ong and held out his hand, I'm glad you came, he said, the seriousness in his voice heard by all, we have much to discuss. Ong nodded, yes we do, he answered, and they headed into the palace. Everyone was soon seated around a large table where food was placed in front of them. Sokka just drooled at the sight of all the meat on the table, and Suki was the only thing holding him back from charging the table. Zuko took his seat at the head of the table, and Ong took the seat on his right. Everyone ate in silence, except Sokka who was stuffing his mouth with every meat on the table. Soon the food was cleared away and everyone looked at Zuko. Zuko looked at all his friends and gave them a sad smile. Everyone, I have some bad news. He stated getting everyone attention. Azula has escaped. Everyone except Ong was surpired. What do you mean she escaped? Sokka yelled and Suki nodded in agreement. Yeah you said she was too crazy to escape, Toph stated annoyed. She is, Zuko stated, I visited the day before myself and she was still broken. I had guards watching her at all times. She didn't escape by herself she had help. Was it the Phoenix group again? Katara asked and Zuko shook his head. 
No, he stated, the guard said she was helped by two canines like animals with amazing abilities. They cornered her at a cliff near the prison. One of the animals pushed her off the cliff and she hasn't been found since. But that means she is dead. Sokka said and everyone looked at her. What, I just saying. She not dead, Zuko said, a fall like that wouldn't kill Azula, even if she was broken. So we need to find her. Toph stated, so what the hold up? We have no idea where she has gone. Zuko replied. Then we tar this place apart till we find her. Toph said and everyone nodded in agreement except Ong. We won't find her. Ong stated getting everyone attention. The Tara looked at Ong in confusion, what do you mean? She asked and everyone turned their attention towards their bald friend. Ong was silent for a few moments, I was recently pulled into the spirit realm by the moon spirit and others, he said, they informed me that Azula was no longer in this world. So I was right she is dead, Sokka said, and Suki hit him in the arm. But not at Sokka, Ong said with sorrow. Azula has been sent to an entirely different world than our own. Everyone was stunned, this was impossible. Tell me you're joking, Sokka stated the fear evident in his voice. A different world. Really. I'm not joking Sokka, Ong stated, Azula is currently loose in another world in a different place than our own. This is very bad, Toph stated, and everyone silently agreed with her. In the elemental nations. Naruto walked into Tswan's office with Azula still in his arms. Swan watched this with a bit of surprise. Aren't you moving a bit fast Brad, Swan said with a smirk, you only met her yesterday. Bachan. Naruto stated a blush spread across his face, and Swan laughed. I'm just messing with you Brad, Swan said as Naruto sighed. Azula moved in Naruto's arms and he set her down. She looked at him and her hand slowly grasped his hand on instinct. Naruto felt this and squeezed her hand. Azula felt the squeeze but didn't know how to respond. Tsunade noticed this, but decided not to tease the Naruto about this till Azula was better. She looked at Naruto, since you are now in charge of Azula and her well-being your apartment is not acceptable for either of you. Naruto nodded but didn't like where it was going, okay Bachan where am I going to live? He said concerned, I kinda don't have the money for a new apartment. Swan smiled, oh I have that covered. She said with large smile. Naruto looked at Swan in disbelief. Really? He said. Swan stood up and headed out of the office, follow me Brad. She said. Naruto nodded and followed pulling Azula along with him. They headed to the top of the Hokage Monument, and Naruto wondered where they were headed. She led them through the forest behind the heads, and soon a large house and a clearing appeared. Naruto just stared at the house with awe. We are living here Naruto exclaimed, this is awesome. Swan smiled, I'm glad you like it, she said, you're not allowed to leave, unless it is to take Azula to her sessions with Anoichi or. Naruto nodded, fine, but can I at least have Raymond delivered? He asked and Swan smiled. No, Swan replied, this is a secret place used to protect VIPs, Raymond delivery is not allowed. Yes botch Ann, Naruto said hanging his head in disappointment, and Swan chuckled. I'll bring you some every once in a while. Swan said and started to head back towards the village. Have fun. Naruto watched her leave a bit sad for not having Raymond, but turned to look at Azula. She seemed to be indifferent to what had happened, but she had yet to let go of his hand. Naruto looked at her and smiled. Let's go check out our new home. He said with excitement. Azula just nodded but squeezed Naruto's hand again. He squeezed back and they headed inside. Later with Azula. Azula lay on her bed looking up at the ceiling. She was surprised at where she was staying, she thought she was being taken to a cell, but after the lady named Tsunade left her and Naruto at the house, Naruto proceeded to explore around the house with Azula in tow. The voices haven't bothered her all day, and she wondered why. She thought they were finally gone. Suddenly the sound of laughing filled her head, you thought you were rid of us, Oz-I voice stated making Azula shiver. The boy and the fox girl could only silence us for so long. No go away, Azula said and started to curl up into a ball. No we cannot, Ursa replied and Azula cringed even more. We are here to end you. Azula felt the tears flow down her face as she hugged herself. You will never be rid of us. Azai stated. Your failure caused this and you will live the rest of till you end it yourself. Leave me be. Azula shouted. She lay on her bed, tears streaming down her face. Suddenly she felt a pair of arms wrap around her and pull her close. She turned and saw Naruto holding her. She cried and cried until she had fallen asleep, feeling safe in his arms. It had been a few days since Naruto and Azula had moved into the house behind the Hokage monument. Azula had been mostly silent and only talked when it was necessary. He could see that Azula still didn't trust him, and he wanted to change that. He knew that it would take time, and he was willing to wait. Azula on the other hand was trying to think straight as she looked around. It had been days since she came to this place, and she had yet to lock away. She stood on guard not wanting to be ambushed and taken to a prison. The voices were still there and tormented her whenever they could. 
The one thing that was keeping her from ending it all was Naruto. Whenever he was around her, the voices were silent. He never left her alone whenever possible, he was there when she had her nightly torment. He just climbed into bed with her and held her. She didn't understand the gesture, but it made her feel safe. She understood that a hug was a form of affection. Unfortunately, the way Naruto held her was like anything she had ever felt. Naruto would just hold Azula in his arms, and she would feel safe. He was the only thing she felt sure. Be going to leave you like all the others, Az-I voice stated in her mind with a laugh, like I left you. Azula ignored her father's voice, but his words hurt her. Everyone who she cared for left her. Her mother, her friends, and her father all left her alone in the end. She looked at Naruto as he cooked breakfast and wondered if he would leave her as well. He will leave and you will be alone, Ursa stated, when that happens, you will be nothing. Please leave me alone, Azula whispered. Az I just laughed, why should we leave a poor little failure like you alone? He commented, you need this to see what a huge failure you are. Azula started cry, why do you do this? She asked. This is for your own good Az I stated, as I said before, a failure such as yourself needs to be told what a big failure you are. Yes monsters such as yourself should be told what you are. Ursa commented, and soon more tears started to flow down Azula's face. Suddenly a pair of arms wrapped around Azula's petite form. Don't listen, Naruto said into Azula's ear. You are not what they say you are. Azula slowly nodded, tears still falling down her face. She turned to face Naruto, a small knowing smile on his face. He lifted one of his hands caressed her face. It's okay, let it out. Azula let her tears fall, and Naruto just held her in the same manner he always did. It made Azula feel safe and she never wanted to leave that safety. Naruto just stroked her hair and held her, he could smell the food burning, but didn't care. Azula was more important than food. Soon the sound of Azula's sobbing lessened, and the pair slowly detangled. God Azula tried to say, but she didn't know what to say. Naruto gave her a grin, I'm glad you're feeling better. He stated. Now wait here while I try to save breakfast. Azula watched him as he walked quickly back into the kitchen, and the sound of pans and dishes were heard. She heard him curse and he walked back into towards him with a smile on his face. So who wants to go out to eat? He said. Azula just nodded and stood up. Naruto held out his hand and Azula. Azula looked at Naruto for a moment not knowing what to do. She slowly extended her hand and slowly wrapped her fingers around Naruto's hand. He gave her a soft smile and they soon headed towards the village. Azula watched as the house disappeared and they walked out onto the top of the Hokage Monument. She took followed behind Naruto as he led her down the monument, it was in the middle of the day, and the village was full of life. She watched as people walked past and she drew closer to Naruto. Az I voice rang through her mind, all these people hate you. Azula tried to ignore his voice and drew even closer to Naruto. Naruto felt Azula squeeze his hand and he squeezed back. Much to Azula's astonishment the simple squeeze the feeling of fear left her and Az I voice seemed to fade away. They soon reached their destination, and Azula saw a sign that read Ichiraku Raymond. Come on, Naruto said with a smile and pulled her inside. Azula looked around and saw a large counter and a row of chairs. Naruto led her to a chair and helped her sit down. He sat next to her and gave a smile, hey guys. Azula watched a young girl with brunette hair, wearing very plain clothes and an apron. She smiled when she saw Naruto, hello Naruto welcome back. She said. I am, Naruto said with a smile. It's great to be back. Am nodded, then noticed Azula, who your friend? She asked. This is Azula, Naruto replied, she knew to the village, so I decided to bring her to the best place to eat in the entire village. Aim smiled, well that nice of you, she said and looked towards Azula with a warm smile on her face. Azula was silent as she looked back at Aim, she didn't know what to say. Back when she was in the cell she didn't have any choice in what she ate, and when she lived in the palace her servants always brought her favorite foods. So now she had no idea what to do. So she remained silent. Am seemed to notice her distress, let's just start you off with a bowl of Mizo Raymond, she said, and Azula nodded. Am smiled and turned toward Naruto, I will get your usual is that okay Naruto? Of course, he said. Am nodded and headed inside. Naruto turned toward Azula. How are you doing? Azula looked back at Naruto, I'm fine. She said with a hint of uncertainty in her voice. Naruto heard the uncertainty in her voice and gave her a concerned look. No you're not, he said making Azula flinch. He saw the flinch and gave her a soft smile, hey it's okay. I am not going to hurt you. Azula looked at Naruto and was silent for a bit, she didn't know how to reply. She remained silent. Naruto reached over and took her hand. Azula felt this and slowly her fingers closed around Naruto's hand. While this was going on AM had came out with their food. She saw the pair holding hands and a smile spread across her face. She set the food down on the counter, I hope I'm not interrupting anything, she said getting Naruto's and Azula's attention. 
Naruto blushed and Azula looked at her with confusion, their hands still joined. You're not interrupting anything, Naruto said quickly. AM gave Naruto a knowing look, sure I wasn't, she said with a smile. I leave you and your girlfriend to your meals. Naruto and Azula just watched her walk away in silence. Naruto was the first to come to his senses. He was about to shout after AM when Azula gave him a small tug. She gave Naruto the same look of confusion she gave AM, what did she mean by girlfriend? She asked him. Naruto looked at her with a bit of shock on his face, but it soon faded away, and nothing, he said as he pulled his raiment toward him. Let's eat. Azula gave him an angered look, Naruto what did she mean, she said letting a bit of her old fire burn again. Tell me. Naruto looked at her with even more shock on his face, this was the first time he seen Azula show any emotion except fear and worry. She was just joking with us. He said as he lifted his chopsticks to start to eat. Azula got even madder, what was she joking about? She asked a bit of steam rising off her body. Naruto shrank back a bit from the angry girl, she was saying we are together. He replied. What do you mean by together? She asked him her anger waning a bit. She means together as a couple, he stated, and Azula nodded in understanding a bit of a blush on her face. Please inform her that she was mistaken. Naruto watched her and couldn't help but smile, this confused Azula even further. What is it? She asked him with a bit of confusing. It's nice to see you act out, he stated and turned to face his ramen, now eats before it gets cold. Azula looked at Naruto with a bit of annoyance on her face and turned to face her ramen. She looked over the food and slowly looked around reached for her chopsticks. She slowly took some noodles from the bowl and looked at them. She watched as Naruto pulled up a several lines of noodles, blow on them and slurp them up. She slowly copied Naruto, and she was presently surprised at how well the food tasted. She ate her food slowly as her formal training kicked in, she turned and looked at Naruto who ate the food with gusto. He was so different from anyone she had met. He was always so happy and caring. She continued to eat a small smirk on her face. They finished their meal and Naruto quickly paid for the meal. They headed back into the village and headed toward the Yamanaka residence to see Inoichi for Azula's first session. They walked toward the front of the house which was the flower shop. They enter the shop and head toward the counter. Azula saw a girl with long blonde hair sitting at the counter. She was about the same age as Naruto and seemed to reading a magazine a bored look on her face. Hey Ino, Naruto said getting the girl attention. She turned and looked at Naruto, hey Naruto, she said with a sultry smile that made Azula frown. How are you? Naruto smiled back oblivious to Ino's tone, great, Naruto replied, we are here to see your dad. We? Ino asked and saw Azula standing next to Naruto. Who's she? This is Azula, Naruto replied, she is new to the village and she has an appointment with your dad. Ino nodded as she looked over Azula. She was silent for a few moments as she looked over Azula. A small frown forming on her face. She could be trouble, Ino thought to herself, but I will make Naruto mine. Follow me, Ino said and opened a panel in the counter. Naruto and Azula followed Ino into the back room to the home area. Inoichi was sitting on the couch and saw the group walk in. Welcome to my home Naruto, Azula, he said as he got up. But nice to see your home Inoichi, Naruto said with a smile. Inoichi nodded and looked toward Azula, it is nice to see you again Azula. He said and Azula nodded. Now Azula if you would follow me to my office we will start your session. Naruto you can wait here till we're done. Naruto nodded, but Azula took a small step back. Naruto noticed this, he turned toward Inoichi, give us a second. Naruto turned toward Azula. He saw the worry in her eyes, hey it's okay. You're not going to be with me? She asked a fear evident in her voice. I am out here if you need me, Naruto replied, but that didn't reassure Azula. He pulled her into a hug, it will be okay. Azula was silent for a moment, all right, she said, and they broke their hug. She walked toward Inoichi and he led her toward the back office. Naruto watched them leave and couldn't help but worry about Azula, but she needs the help that he couldn't provide. He was able to help with her mindscape up to a certain point, but she needs a professional like Inoichi to help her as well. Naruto sat down on one of the couches and signed. I hope it goes well, he thought to himself. It will be okay, QB replied, Inoichi knows what he's doing. Naruto smiled, thanks Caillou, Naruto said as he got comfortable on the couch. He suddenly felt another presence on the couch and saw Ino sitting next to him. She gave him a very sultry smile that made Naruto get a little nervous. So Naruto, Ino said scooting closer to her fellow blonde, how have you been? With Azula and Inoichi. Inoichi sat across from Azula warm smile on his face. Welcome Azula, thank you for coming. He said, these sessions are to help you heal. Since this is your first session we will take it slow. Azula just nodded, trying G to hide her fear. Now close your eyes and we will begin. Azula closed her eyes, and Inoichi began to go through some hand signs, he finished the final hand sign. He put his hand on Azula's head and slowly descended into her mind. 
Inoichi opened his eyes and found himself standing in a sea of broken glass and land floating about. Azula stood next to him and couldn't help but cringe. Inoichi looked down at Azula, shall we be off? He asked her and held out his hand. Azula hesitated a bit but slowly grasped Inoichi's extended hand. They slowly moved through Azula's mind. Azula looked around and saw the fragments floating all over the place. Suddenly the sound of her father's laughing filled the air. Azula flinched when she heard this and looked around for the voice. Look who here, Oz I voice said from all sides, our little Azula, come to receive her punishment. No, leave me alone, Azula said slowly going into herself. Inoichi narrowed his eyes as he looked at Azula, he kneeled down next to her, Azula, this is your mind you have control, he said, fight it. Azula didn't seem to hear him, poor, failure Azula, Oz I voice said as his voice got even louder. You are going to be shown your failure, and when you can't take it anymore I will end it for you. Inoichi looked at Azula, Azula listened to my voice, he said trying to get Azula out of herself. Azula looked up at Inoichi, her eyes filled with tears, make it stop, she pleaded with Inoichi. Inoichi looked directly into Azula's eyes, you have the power to make it stop, he said to her with conviction. Azula just looked at him with fear, I can't. She replied as suddenly a wall of fire appeared beside them. Azula turned and saw Azai and Ursa standing before them. Well Azula it wonderful to see you, Ursa said with sarcasm in her voice, you've been such a bad girl being away from us for so long. She pulled out a set of knives. Now come and get your punishment for making me worry. Inoichi frowned, he hoped this wouldn't happen. He looked down at Azula and saw that she was breaking down. Azula. He called hoping his words would get through to her. If you can hear me think of the place where you feel the safest and focus on that place. The fireball flew over the pair's head and Inoichi turned and saw Azai and Ursa coming toward them. This is not good. He said as he watched the pair advanced. He pulled out a kunai and stood in front of Azula prepared to fight the pair off. Azai and Ursa charged forward going in for kill. Suddenly Ursa and Azai began to fade from view, and another view seems to take its place. Inoichi soon found himself and Azula in the middle of a long hall with many pictures of different people who all looked similar. Where are we? Inoichi asked Azula as he looked around the hall. The hall of the Fire Lords, Azula said the fear slowly fading from her voice. I would always come here when I was feeling sad or lonely. She looked over the faces of the pervious Fire Lords and seemed at peace. She looked at one of the spaces and found it empty much to her relief. Interesting, Inoichi said as he sat down next to Azula. So tell me when the first time you came here was. Azula sat next to Inoichi in silence, when I was four I was playing with my brother Zuko, we were practicing our firebending. I was always better than Zuko at firebending and we were sparing, I hit him in the hand and gave him a small burn. Mother came over and fussed over Zuko and scolded me. I got mad and ran away so no one would see me cry. I hated that she yelled at me, it was an accident I didn't mean to. So I ran here and cried till I had no more tears. After that this is the place where I come and show emotions that I couldn't show others. Inoichi listened with interest, that's good, he said, so why here? What makes this place so special? Azula looked at face of her grandfather Fire Lord Azalin, when I hear I feel as if they are all watching over me, helping me be the best. Comforting me and helping me through everything. That is wonderful, Inoichi said. He got up and smiled at Azula. I think that enough for today, from now on we are going to start our sessions here and move outward, is that okay with you? Azula just nodded. He watched as Azula slowly faded away back into consciousness, he found the door out of the hallway and looked out into Azula's mind. Everywhere else were broken pieces and shattered buildings for as far as he could see. This is going to take a while. He cut off the jutsu and went back to his body. He opened his eyes and saw Azula staring at him, she seemed a bit better, and he was glad he could help her. Let's go see what Naruto's doing shall we? He said and Azula nodded. They headed out office and saw no one in the room. They headed into the flower shop and saw Naruto watering the flowers. Naruto set the watering can down and turned to face the pair, hey guys how are you? Inoichi smiled, enjoy yourself. He said and Naruto nodded. Well we're done for the day so she all yours and also do you know where Ino went? Naruto grabbed Azula quickly and ran out of the shop, sorry no idea bye. He called as he sped off. Inoichi watched this and face palmed. He headed back into his home and found Ino asleep on her bed. Ino woke up shortly after her father left and looked around her room confused. How I get here? She said to herself then remembered Naruto knocking her out when she tried to get close to him. She smiled to herself. You won this round Foxy, but you will be mine. End chapter. So this part ends here. If you want to see next part of this series. Like the video now and share the story with your friends. Bye bye.